Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome DARPA computer scientist John Launchberry. It's 1890, and Louis Brandeis is worried. He's worried about an invasive gadget that would change the way people recorded and shared information. He's so worried, he created a new legal doctrine entitled the right to privacy. What was this technological terror? The Kodak instantaneous camera. We might laugh at that now, but his concerns seem prophetic. Today, every action we take creates a digital contrail of information. Data spews out behind us from our phones, when we surf the web, when we're in our cars, at the grocery store or the doctor, while we're traveling, or even just while staying at home. Everything we do online leaves a trail, a trail that can be followed if you know how. It's not all bad. Because of this data, we get up-to-the-minute travel reports. Our businesses become increasingly optimized and profitable. Medical workers get early warnings on public health issues like the flu and Ebola. And governments can interrupt terrorist activities, all good things which we benefit from every day. But there are downsides. Both democracy and innovation depend on, the, on creativity and the open exchange of diverse ideas. Many fear that when every action is recorded and analyzed, it will have a chilling effect, such as stifling legitimate debate on sensitive and controversial political issues. It strikes at the heart of a free society. So what should we do? Must we take the bad with the good, or is there something better we can do? Can we imagine a technology that would allow us to retain the societal benefits and yet protect our personal privacy? This is precisely the question we're asking at DARPA. We're inventing ways to break the apparent tension between the value of data and the need for privacy. Rather than compromise between these two, our new research program, named Brandeis, aims to build a third option, enabling safe and predictable sharing of data while reliably preserving privacy. The old way of thinking is that privacy is about stopping other people from seeing your information. Our new vision is that privacy technologies are about being so in control of your data that you feel able to allow greater sharing. This mental reset comes at a critical juncture in human history. As a society, we're at a choice point. Either we act or we risk losing privacy forever. At the moment, none of us knows what we're revealing, when, and to whom. It's gotten out of our control. And even if we did have control, our data world is so complex, we can't easily say who we want to have access to our data and for, for what purpose. Just think how bad those privacy policies are we all love reading. And then, even worse, when we do share private data, it's gone from our control forever. Someone else has it. Maybe it gets stolen, or worse, sold. At DARPA, we're developing computational methods to protect private information without depleting the larger value it can have. One example is secure multi-party differential privacy. It computes without needing to decrypt your data, and at the same time guarantees that nobody could reconstruct your data from any output result. It sounds counterintuitive, even impossible, but we think we can do it. And we're also pushing hard on machine learning to be able to have the computer turn your intuitive privacy preferences into actionable decisions about who may and may not have your data. Both of these thrusts demand some heavy computer science. But if we're successful, we'll be able to accelerate information sharing because we can become confident that our data will be used only for its intended purpose and no other. And the potential impact is dramatic. Confidence in data privacy will enable increased data sharing that can help us build smarter cities where every building and the traffic and energy is optimized minute by minute. It can enable new cyber defenses where network devices and companies share their network data 
and the cyber attack data. It can even open the door to personalized medicine by discovering correlations between your personal genetic information and the effectiveness of therapies. These visions are just beginnings, but with strong privacy controls, who knows what we'll be able to invent? Thank you. Thank you, John. So we have a break right now. We're a little bit behind. We want to try to stay on schedule as best we can. So it's a big room to empty out and refill, but we want to try to get you back here at 5 after, please. Um, there is an opportunity, don't forget, at the end of the day, at, uh, after 5, to really have a great reception, lots of time to wander through the demos and talk. So let's try to keep this as an efficient break, and we'll see you at 5 after. Thank you. <laughs>